That's it. While you're standing, just can you just worship him for a few seconds? We bless your name. We bless your name, oh God. Oh man, shake ya man da da bash. Go babandi de be ko shake ya man. Go bandi de be ko shake ya man. Ramandi de be ko shi. Go bandi de be ko shi. Feel the room, feel the room, feel the room. We thank you, Father. We, your people, stand in your presence. And we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit mm. that is permeating in this room. But more specifically, he lives within us. This treasure that's within this earthen vessel that the excellent power may be of you and not of us. We thank you for the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Father, have your way in this place on this morning. Have your way through the word of God. I thank you even now that the Holy Spirit is resting upon every heart. It's resting upon every heart. And I thank you even now, Father, that we which have ears to hear, we hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us on this morning. We love you so much, Father. It's in Jesus' name. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. Come on, tell the Lord, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise. Come on, that's it. Give the Lord some praise. Oh, God, we bless your holy name. Come on, that's it. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Oh, bash it. God, we bless you in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh my, there's such a spirit of worship in this place on this morning. While you're standing before you take your seats, can we bless God for the men of God this morning? Apostle Vaughn, we thank you. We thank God for you, amen. And we thank you for opening up, us up this morning, amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. God is so good. He is so good and we bless him on this morning. We say welcome to all of you who are in the house of the Lord on this morning. And even those of you who are watching via Facebook Live, we welcome you to another. That's it. Give God praise. We welcome you to another time of fellowship, another time, another opportunity to be in the presence of God and just to hear a word from the Lord. I don't know about you guys, but this series has truly strengthened my faith has really, really, really been a blessing. Can we praise God for this Now Faith Is series? It has really, really, really been a blessing. I can't speak for no one else, but I tell you my strength has been, um, my faith has been strengthened and, and I have just really been encouraged in the word of the Lord. I tell you what though, today's message, uh, I thought I was gonna come one way and the Lord just kind of arrested me <laughs> in the middle of preparing this and shifted things. And I tell you, it was a very um, challenging word to the flesh, but um, I know that it is going to bless you. So we're going to just kind of go back through the word of the Lord. And I'm going to ask that you would go um, to Mark 11, 22. Um, but I know today is going to really be a blessing. I ask that you sit in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Uh, it's going to challenge all of our flesh, but I know that it is going to strengthen um, our spirit man. We began to talk about on week one and two, we took, we took a look at faith and we took a look at what it is and what it is not, what faith is and what it is not. And we gave you the definition, a working definition. Um, this is a biblical definition of what faith is. And we told you that faith is a strong belief. 
or a strong conviction of the truthfulness of God, um, that faith is reliance upon Christ for salvation. So when we're talking about faith, we're just simply talking about the strong belief. Uh, and, and we know that conviction is, is simply a strong belief, a conviction of the truthfulness of God. The word of the Lord says that, um, that they that um, believe in God, that they that come to God, excuse me, must first believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in order for us to even come to God, we must first believe that he exists. That's the only way that we're going to come to him. That's the only way we're going to find ourselves running to him is to first believe that he even exists. So the first A part of that definition, again, is a strong belief or strong conviction of the truthfulness of God. It's also faith. Faith is also reliance upon Christ for salvation. It is trusting Jesus Christ for deliverance. It's, it's trusting him. It's putting our spiritual well-being into his hands, his very capable hands, and trusting him for deliverance, trusting him for salvation, trusting him for healing. I'm trusting him for, for provision. The Bible says that we are to look unto Jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So this is the working definition that we gave you over the last two weeks, a powerful definition. It's a strong uh, um, belief, a conviction of the truthfulness of God. And we showed you through the scriptures that the Bible says that let every man be a liar, but let God be true. God cannot lie. He cannot lie if he has promised you something, if he has spoken something over your life. The Bible says that he is able also to perform that thing. So I'm just excited about, amen, serving a, a, someone, serving a God that I can put my full weight on, that I can grab all of the promises of God with both hands and hang on to the promises of God and to put my full weight on him. Amen. So we're going to look at Mark eleven twenty two, and it's one verse of scripture, and it simply says, have faith in God. Jesus says to his disciples here, he says, again, have faith in God. They begin to question him about the fig tree that just the day before he had cursed. And they begin to ask him about it, and he simply said this, have faith in God. In other words, do not misplace your faith, but place your faith in God. Place your faith in God. Faith in God is a focused faith. It's a faith that is focused on God, it's focused on his word, it's focused on what God said. I mean, you know, it, hell and high water can come. But when you have a faith that is not misplaced, a faith that is focused on what God said, what God said would, would happen, what God said would come to pass, you stay right there and you believe him. You believe, I mean, you throw caution to the wind and you say, you know what? I'm going to believe God against all contrary winds. Why? Because he spoke it and he is not man that he should lie. And I am going to see, listen at this, I am going to see the salvation of the Lord. I'm going to see the deliverance of God. I am going to see his mighty hand. Why? Because my faith is not misplaced. My faith, like Jesus said, is in God. So is there a degree of trust or faith that we are to have in man and each, in each other? Absolutely. There is a degree. There's a degree. There's a, a degree, a level of trust and even faith that we're to have in each other. But we are not. Somebody say we are not to place our trust in man above our reliance and dependence upon God. We are not to place our trust and our reliance and dependence in man above God. Come on. We're not to put our pastors, faith in our pastors above God, not to put our faith in our husbands, your husbands or your wives. Come on. Above God, your mentor, your therapist. You are not to put your faith in the arms of flesh above God. 
because it is that focused faith. It is that faith that is focused on what God said, what he, his will, his way, his words. The Bible says that his ways are higher, so much higher than our ways. His thoughts are so much higher than our thoughts. Amen. His doings and his dealings are so much higher than our ways. Amen. So we are not to put our trust or our faith in anybody else above our faith in God. Amen. Because there's an old saying that some folk, you can't trust them as far as you can see them. <laughs> some folk, you can't trust them as far as you can see them. So again, Mark eleven twenty two 22 is talking about complete faith. It's talking about a complete trust in God. And again, Jesus said to his, said this to his disciples. He said, have faith in God. And this type of faith, this is the type of faith that produces Faith in God is the type of faith that produces, listen at this, supernatural power, supernatural miracles, supernatural signs and wonders. Because it goes on to say in verse 23, uh, this kind of faith, again, gives you power in your words, gives you power in your declarations, and power in your decrees. Verse 23 says, you can say to the mountains which is symbolically speaking, you can say to the mountains, be thou removed, listen at this, and be cast into the sea without doubt in your hearts, believing that those things that you speak, those things that you say, those things that you decree, those things that you declare will come to pass. And it goes on to say that you will have whatsoever you speak. So the faith in God, the faith in God, this kind of faith, this kind that Jesus was talking about, it has the power to produce. When you put your faith in God, when you put your full weight on him, you can open up your mouth and begin to decree a thing and watch that thing be established. Because the God kind of faith, my God, the God kind of faith produces when you have your faith in him, when you have everything locked and loaded in him and you put your full weight on him and you say, God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to rely on you. I am looking for you. I am expecting you to come through. The Bible says that you can open up your mouth and speak to mountains, speak to situations and begin to command them and tell them where to go and they will go. Why? Because your faith is in God. This is so good. This is the word of the Lord. And believing that those things that you speak or you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you speak, whatsoever you say, when you are walking in the God kind of faith. Verse 24 says, therefore, I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So there's a question for the believers of Jesus Christ. What hinders us from seeing this manifest in our lives in a greater capacity? What hinders? If we see in 22 that we can have faith in God, if, if we see that we can say to the mountain, symbolically speaking, to be thou removed and cast into the sea without doubt in our hearts, believing that those things that we say or speak shall come to pass, why is it that we don't see these things manifested in a greater capacity? Write this in your notes. <laughs> Violating other spiritual principles and laws. What hinders us from seeing this manifested in our lives in a greater capacity is violating other spiritual principles and laws. Okay? Let's keep reading in verse 25. Verse 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all against any, that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. 
So he says here in verse 23 that we can speak to the mountain, can command it to go into the sea and tell it to be removed. And if we believe in our hearts that we can have whatsoever we say. But it goes on to show us what a, a violation of another spiritual principle is called forgiveness. <laughs> this is why we don't see the manifestation of the faith of God in our lives on a larger level. It's because we are walking in unforgiveness. So we're going to be talking about faith to forgive this morning. Faith to forgive. Verse 25 again reads, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. So write this in your notes. To forgive means to pardon, release, or overlook. It means to ignore an offense or debt and treat the offender as not guilty. So when we're talking about having the faith to forgive, now we talked about faith and favor a few weeks ago and we got excited about that. Faith and favor, faith and favor. We believe in God for faith and favor. We're going to walk in the favor of God and faith is going to pull out of God everything that I'm believing him for. Now God says, I now need for you to have faith to forgive, faith to, re to release those people who have harmed you, faith to release those people and to render them not guilty because it is unforgiveness that is hindering you from moving and from pulling out of me those things that I desire for you to have because your heart is full of unforgiveness. You are to forgive them from your heart, not from your lips. God said this forgiveness is to be a heart service, not a lip service. So he said again here in verse 23 that we can speak the word of God. We can decree the word of God. You can tongue talk, you can decree, and you can declare. But if your heart is full of unforgiveness, come on, Bible quoting, tongue talking believers. Come on, we're decreeing and we're declaring. But if we are harboring unforgiveness in our hearts, it is like kryptonite to our superman. It is like kryptonite to our superwoman. It weakens the faith of God in our lives. It weakens the faith of God in our lives. The late great Smith Wiggleworth uh, wrote this. He said, he once stated, and he said, being hard-hearted, critical, or unforgiving will hinder faith quicker than anything else. Being hard-hearted, critical, or unforgiving will hinder faith. And this is what we need to pull out of God. This is what we need to pull out of what's in spiritual store. We need faith. We need faith. And if our faith is being hindered or weakened by being hard-hearted, critical, or unforgiving, then how are we pulling out of the spirit realm into the natural realm the things that we need with weak faith? Unforgiveness again weakens faith because according to Galatians 5 and 6, listen at this, faith is activated. Faith worketh by love. So faith is activated, it's energized, it's expressed by the love that we have one to another. When we pray for our enemies, when instead of, you know, doing the tick for the tack, when we love our enemies, when we pray for our enemies, when we release those who have hurt us, we're operating in love. And it is that love that gives an activation to the faith of God. It is activated. It is energized. It is expressed through love. Which means without love, without forgiveness. My God, without praying for those who despitefully use us, who persecute us, without that, then our faith has no motor. Our faith has no activation. Our faith has no energy. 
Oh my God. Jesus said to the woman with the issue of blood, your faith pulled out of me what you needed. Is your faith strong enough to pull out of God what you need? You need strong faith. A faith that is strengthened to pull out of God. But if your faith is weak and unforgiveness, being hard-hearted, being critical, being unforgiving, it hinders and weakens your faith. It's like kryptonite again to your Superman, <laughs> to your supernatural when you walk in unforgiveness. Put this in your notes. Love activates again. It energizes and it expresses faith. Psalm 66 verse 18. If you can turn there with me, please. Psalm 66, 18. And I just want to walk you through the word this morning and just give you something that will really strengthen your faith. Psalm 66 verse 18 says, the psalmist says, had I regarded sin or if I had regarded, had I regarded sin or iniquity and my emphasis is of unforgiveness in my heart, the Lord will not hear or pay attention to my prayer. Had I regarded sin or had I regarded iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not hear or pay attention to my prayer. Verse 19 goes on to say, but God did listen. He paid attention to my prayer. And it must have been obvious because what God pointed out, he dealt with. What God showed him was in his heart. He, he obviously had to repent of that thing and get it right because he said, if I held it there, if I would have held it there, if I would have held it there in my heart and, and tried to ignore it and tried to dismiss it, tried to preach over it, tried to shout over it, tried, tried to decree and declare over it, speak in tongues. Had I regarded it in, in my heart, the Lord would not have paid attention to my prayer. But he goes on to verse 19 says, but God did listen he paid attention to my prayer verse 20 says praise God who did not ignore my prayer listen at this or withdraw his mercy from me his unfailing his unfailing merciful compassion love he did not withdraw that from me glory to God I absolutely know that there were times that God overlooked me overlooked the things that was in my heart I know I'm not by myself because the psalm is here uh, apparently he got that thing right but there are some times that I held things in my heart and just like the Lord is telling us to do today is to overlook, amen, offense. It's to ignore. God, I know that God ignored some things in my heart and he answered my prayer. He was merciful unto me. He was loving unto me. When I didn't cross every T or dot every I, the Lord looked down. He looked past me and he saw my knee. Glory to God. He did it for his name's sake, not because I was all the way good not because I was all the way loving and forgiving the psalmist said if I hold it in my heart if I regard it in my heart if I keep it in my heart I hear the word of the Lord saying shall you continue to sin that grace may abound God forbid shall you continue to hold that thing in your heart and the Lord has showed it to you there's been three prophets to come from out of town and they pointed it out and you still want to hold it in your heart and God says shall you continue to sin that my grace that I continue to overlook what you won't deal with God God forbid that you continue to overlook it that you continue to say the Lord knows my heart yes he knows your heart he knows all of our hearts and that they are deceitfully wicked and the Bible says the Holy Spirit will show us oh my God he leads and guides us into all truth and righteousness concerning us he said when you're gonna deal with that I put my finger on it amen years ago and you're still walking around in it and I am merciful unto you I love you I see your knees I see your knees but God says I'm getting ready to draw back my hand glory to God until you deal with that iniquity that you are regarding you are treating that pet demon and you've given that pet demon a name and you you've given excuses that this is just how I am 
And God says, but this is not how I want you to stay. Let me, oh my God, let me finish the good work that I began in you. Let me finish the good work I began in you. There's so many things that I have in storage for you. But the only way you're going to pull them out of storage is you're going to have to unload. You're going to have to unload some of the unforgiveness. You're going to have to release some of the grudges. You're going to have to deal with the resentment and the bitterness that is springing up oh my god that's springing up that's defiling and hurting you and defiling many the psalmist said had i regarded iniquity in my heart the lord would not have heard me he would not have paid attention to my prayer he said but god did listen and I believe it's because the psalmist, he stopped and he dealt with the issues that were in his heart. The issues that were in his soul that kept hindering him, that kept hindering the prayers of God, that kept hindering the breakthroughs, that kept hindering the victory. And he said, praise God, who did not ignore my prayer, nor withdraw his mercy. Woo! Oh God, if you were to withdraw yourself from us, God, where are we going to go, God? If you were to withdraw your mercy and your compassion who could we go to who would excuse us in all of our messiness who could we go to who wouldn't judge us who could we go to who wouldn't throw us back and reject us who could we go to there is no one that is more merciful than you there is no one who is full of grace and compassion I don't know nobody The mercy of the Lord, the psalmist said, he said, praise God who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his mercy. And I thank God I know that he's overlooked some things in my life. He's overlooked some things in your life. And here it is why we should be full of praise. We should be full of gratitude because God, you did not deal with me in my mess. Oh my God. You did not deal with me. You gave me an opportunity to get it right. Oh God, you gave me a space. You gave me space. You gave me a little room. Hey, yeah, my show. In the midst of my bondage, you gave me a little room, a little room, a little room, a little space. A little grace to get it right oh my god hey god you didn't kill me in my sin you didn't kill me when i was fornicated you didn't kill me oh go you didn't kill me oh god you didn't kill me because you saw your plan for me you saw that your plan was good and it was perfect plans of peace and not of evil to give me hope for my expected end oh god give me a little grace while i get myself together oh god give me a little grace while i find the strength to forgive them god you saw what they did to me you heard what they said about me you saw how they turned a whole lot of people against me god give me a little room i need i need a few more days i need just a few more days God I need a fast God I need a purging oh God I need to cry out I need to hold on to the horns of the altar give me just a little bit more time God who my shame because every time I see them, there's something that's go through me. Woo! Hey, am I by myself? Am I by myself? Every time I see them, something just goes through me, God. And I know it's there. I know it's there. And you and I are going to deal with it. But give me just a little bit more time. I know you've been overlooking it. I know you've been merciful. And I know that you said that I can come. We can come boldly to the throne of a gracious father. Listen to this. That we may obtain mercy. Mercy is when you're wrong. Oh God. You need mercy when you're wrong. You need mercy when you did not do what God commanded you to do. And then it says that we may find grace. We may find favor in the time of need. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm in a season of my life, Elder Katina, that I need God like I've never needed him before. And I'm hang oh, there's some strange stuff. But I know I said, God, you got me, and you're going to pull me out of this thing. But God, when I come out, I don't want to come out bitter. I don't want to come out mad. I don't want to come out angry. When I've been tried, God, I shall come forth and that's pure gold. I'm not talking about no electroplated gold, but I'm talking about pure gold. I'm not talking about no fake gold, but I'm talking about pure gold. I don't want to come out mean. I don't want to come out nasty. I don't want to come out bitter. I don't want to come out angry. I don't want to come out wounded. So God, give me a little space. Give me a little room.
room, a little room, a little room. I need a little room. Come on, tell the Lord, I need a little room. I need a little room. I need a little room. But the thing about it is we cannot keep overlooking it. We cannot keep disregarding or holding that thing in our heart. The violation of sin, the sin of unforgiveness. Oh, my God. And the Lord, oh, Jesus, apostle is my witness as the Lord turned me on last night. I literally got sick to my stomach as I was reading this. And I told apostle, I said, I feel like I need to throw up. I feel like I need to throw up. And I said, yeah, we're coming for every, we're getting ready to clean house. We're coming for every pig in the parlor. We're coming for every pig in the parlor. Oh, don't look at me funny. I know I got to Mike. You got some stuff you need to throw up to. You got some demons you need to get delivered from too. I told Apostle I feel sick to my stomach and he had to pray for me. And I went to sleep with him praying for me. I said, I feel sick to my stomach. And the Lord said, yeah, 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 yeah. We coming for that thing. I turned you. I turned you in this thing called faith. You thought it was about getting everything that you wanted out of me. But God says, no, it's about me getting out of you. The faith to get out of you. And there was a fight. You don't know the hell that messengers have to fight to get to your word. You don't know the hell that we have to go through. You, We have to fight hell. Just I've been fighting hell just to show up. And where are the intercessors? Where are the intercessors? Fighting hell. And I said, God, I'm not coming out of this empty. I'm not coming out mad. But I felt a regurgitation. I felt like I had to throw up. I felt like I needed to go to the bathroom and just vomit up. I said, just God. And God says, that's what I'm coming for. And, and all of you, under the sound of my voice, God says, I'm getting ready to clean house. Woo. God says, I'm getting ready to clean house because I'm getting ready to land and bring some things into your life. But I can't bring them into your life. I can't land them in your life when your heart is full of unforgiveness. There's sin in the camp, baby. There's sin in the camp, baby. Oh, my God, there's pigs in your parlor. I don't care how you fix them up. I don't care how you dress them up. I don't care how you make them up. Glory to God. A demon is still a demon. An unclean spirit is still an unclean spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God says, clean house. Talk about the faith to forgive. Talk about the faith to release people who hurt you. Talk about to, the faith to forgive people who've been dead and gone now for 15, 20 years and you still mad at them. I'm talking about the girl that did something to you back in fourth grade and you still carrying that thing. Your ex-husband that left you, your wife that left you, still carrying that thing. And God said you can't walk in the newness of life because unforgiveness will weigh you down. Bitterness will weigh you down. Oh my God, resentment will weigh you down. It's a heavy burden to carry. God says that all you have to do is forgive. All you have to do is release. All you have to do is ask me to increase your faith like the apostles did. Oh, my shit. So we can't keep overlooking regarding the violation of the sin of unforgiveness and expect our faith to work. Because our faith is activated. Do you see now why there may not be faith working? It's because it's activated. And it's, it's ooh, listen to this. It's jump started. Woo-hey, and the Lord is here to give your faith a jump start. You know, when your battery die, come on, you call for another car and it give you a jump. God says, I'm giving you a jump this morning. I'm jump starting your faith. I'm giving you the secret. I'm giving you the mystery to how to walk in strong faith. It's to love. Oh my God. It's to win that thing. You know, God wants to get us to the place that we are so forgiven and we overlook and ignore stop taking
taking count and taking, taking score of every time somebody look at you wrong, every time somebody say something to you wrong, every time somebody say something to you out of the way. God says, see, you are scorekeepers. And this stuff is piling up in your spirit and it's becoming heavy. And God says, you don't have faith enough. Your faith is not strong enough to pull in what I have predestined for you because your faith is activated. It's energized. It's expressed by love, by forgiveness, by overlooking some stuff, pastor. We just got to overlook some stuff. We got to ignore the devil because if you give him a platform, he'll put on a show. If you give him an audience, you got to tell the devil, I see you, but I don't see you. I'm ignoring you in this season. And the next one too, I am not going to get caught up in keeping score with who don't like me, who don't receive me. And stop allowing people to come and dump trash in your spirit, telling you about who been talking about you. Well, my question is, what did you say? What did you do? Come on, come on. What did you say? to defend me or did you just nod your head in agreement I don't know why that, that was free there, but somebody needed that in here. <laughs> so here's another violation something that hinders and, and, and the Lord just began to give me certain violations and the one violation is, is unforgiveness in our hearts but this is another thing that hinders faith from operating in our lives many are believing God for financial prosperity over their lives over their businesses they're quoting decreeing declaring prosperity scriptures but it's in violation of the biblical principles of tithing giving and biblical stewardship God says, how are you going to have the faith, glory to God, for me to come into your life and to bring prosperity into your life? But you are violation. You are in violation of the biblical principle of tithing, giving, and financial stewardship. Ooh, y'all got real quiet on that one. <clears throat> so the three main elements of faith that we began to discuss over these last two weeks is faith, again, is a strong belief or a strong conviction of the truthfulness of God. Number two is a personal surrender to God. So you have a strong conviction that God is true, that of the truthfulness of him, that he is a true God, that I can rely upon him, I can depend upon him. And the second thing is I have a personal surrender to the one that I can rely on, the one that I can depend on. And then three is behavior or actions that match that surrender. If I say that I believe in God, if I say that I have faith in God, then I'm going to find myself, apostle, doing those things, the bringing forth fruit that is meat for repentance or that is proof that I believe the way I believe. So again, the three elements of faith is a strong belief, a personal surrender to God and actions that back it up. Okay. So per apostle Vaughn, faith is our life's response. In obedience, we're still talking about forgiveness. In obedience to God, his word, and his ways. Romans 1 and 17 says that the just shall live by faith, shall live by what God said. And if God told us to forgive, and I'm going to show you, I can show you better than I can tell you. If he told us to forgive so that we could be forgiven, then that is what he is expecting. He's not expecting you to base it off of your feelings. I don't feel like releasing them. I don't feel like letting them go. I don't feel like pardoning them. What do you feel like uh, continuing the way you were continuing? Do you feel like uh, continuing to struggle and find yourself defeated? So Romans 1 and 17 says, The just shall live by faith shall live by, listen at this, making a conscious choice to follow God. When you are full of faith, you make a conscious decision that every day I am going to walk by faith. And we just throw that term around, and walking by faith and not by sight. Well, what does that look like? Walking by faith mean, means making a conscious decision that I am going to ignore some things. I'm going to overlook some things. I am not going to go throughout this day as a debt collector and a scorekeeper. I'm going to let some stuff roll off my back because I'm not going to be bogged down with unforgiveness. 
So I'm going to make a conscious decision. Listen to this. Before I even leave the house. That I'm going to walk in love. And if I have to go to the mirror and look at myself in the mirror and say, now you're going to behave today. You're going to represent Christ today. You're going to let your light so shine before men that they're going to see your good works and glorify my father, which is in heaven. Come on. You got to talk to yourself. Come on. You got to tell yourself you are not going to go to work and act out. You are not going to go to the bank and act out. You are not going to go to your neighbor's house and act out. Come on. As a matter of fact, you're going to take them a blessing. Isn't this what the word said? The word God would do. Oh my God. He just does opposite of how we would do it. Because we know what we would do to our enemies. We, we know how we was raised. We know how we was raised. Come on, black, TD, black, 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 right? Come on, TikTok. I know y'all don't seen that. Because if you hit me, I'm going to hit you. That's how we were raised. But God says, no, my ways are so much more higher than your ways. <laughs> I didn't say do a tick for tack or hit back or evil for evil. But I said, bless those. Who persecute you. Who dragging your name through the streets of Goldsboro. My God. I mean, they just out there, prophet. They just having a field day. And you got the, you, you know, you said, you said, shoot, I ain't no chump. I tell you what, I ain't no chump. God said, no, you, you're not a chump. You're not. You're a son of God. You're my son. You're my child. And, and didn't I tell you that vengeance is mine and I can repay, I can repay better than you can. So God says, take your mouth off it, take your hands off of it. And what I need for you to do is to sit in me, be still and know that I am God because I am going to handle it. I'm going to handle it. I need for you to be still because see if you get in it if you get in it you're gonna make a greater mess than it's already been made but I need you to take your hands and your mouth see because some people have taken their hands off of but they still got their mouth on them God said why are you still mumbling God said why are you still mumbling why are you still mumbling I said take your mouth off of it and your hands off of it So James 2 and 17 states that if faith does not have works, <clears throat> if faith does not have obedience to back it up, it is dead by itself. So if we said that the just shall live by faith by making a conscious choice to follow God, his word and his ways, if faith does not have obedience to back it up, it's dead by itself. If faith is our life's response in obedience to God, his word and his ways, then if we don't have action to back it up or obedience then it's dead by itself so faith has a write this in your notes faith has a back it up with obedience mentality if faith says I believe a thing then what I'm going to do is back it up with obedience this is what faith says. Faith says, I have the faith of God. I have the faith of God. Come on, Mark eleven twenty two. 22. Jesus says, have faith in God. And my faith in God is backed up with obedience. So if he's telling me to release my offenders, then this is what I am going to do. I am going to release them. I am going to pardon them. So again, Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have all against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you of your trespasses. So God says, if you forgive, I will forgive you. If you will not forgive, then I will not forgive you. It's, it's here in the Bible. Amen. So to forgive means this. Take this down. To forgive means to pardon, to release, or overlook. When you pardon somebody, you release them overlook or ignore whatever word you want to use in offense or debt and listen at this and treat the offender as not guilty oh my god so you're going to overlook you're going to ignore you're going to pardon and you're going to release them of any offense any debt and listen it says and treat them as if they are not guilty Meaning you're not going to be indifferent towards them. But you're going to treat them as if they are not guilty. You're, you're, you're going to treat them as if they never did what they did to you. Now, how many of you know we can't do that in our own strength? 
We cannot do that in, in our own strength. And the Bible says that it is not by our might nor by our power, but it is by the spirit of the Lord that the Holy Spirit will enable us. He does more than enable us to speak in tongues. He does more than enable us to function in our spiritual gifts, y'all. But he enables us to love. He enables us to forgive. He enables us to bless and not curse. And treat the offender as not guilty. So forgiving and praying for our enemies. Listen at this. Hold on to your seats. It's our Christian duty. It's our Christian duty. Forgiving and praying for our enemies. It's our Christian duty. It's what we are supposed to do. And we cannot do that as carnal Christians. We will find ourselves constantly entangled in flesh fights. When the Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities and powers and spiritual weakness, we do not wrestle with each other. We've been commanded to forgive and love one another and pray for one another and treat the offender as not guilty. I don't know about you, but I need the Holy, all of the Holy Spirit's help to do that and to walk in that. Hallelujah. So we see in, in, in Matthew 6 and 9, Matthew 6 and 9. Can you go there for me real quickly? Matthew 6 and 9. Here is Jesus when he's teaching his disciples how to pray. He said, after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. So he, he said that up front in verse 12. And verse 13 says, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. He closed out the illustration of how to pray. But why did he go back in verse 14? Why did Jesus, didn't he already mention this in verse 12? So why is he being redundant here in verse 14? For he says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Well, he had already told them that in verse 12. So why the redundancy? The redundancy is the importance of getting our prayers answers. God said, I want Jesus said, I want to say one more time. Release those who have harmed you if you want me to release you when you harm me. So he was redundant. It's because of the importance of forgiving those who have wounded you. Okay, go with me to Luke 17. We're almost there. <clears throat> Luke 17, and we're going to begin reading at verse 3. Luke 17 and 3 reads, and I'm going to be reading a different version. It says, watch yourselves. If anyone, if, if another believer sins, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, then forgive. Four says, even if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you must forgive. And verse five says, and the apostles, listen, listen to what the apostle says to Jesus. Look now, look now, Lord. That's not in there, but that, this is how I feel, feel like saying it. Look now, listen, if you want us to do that, then you're going to have to increase our faith. Increase our faith because it's going to take faith to be able to release somebody that, that, that sins against me seven times in a day and says, God, you're going to have to help me because I'm not able to do that in my own ability. I'm not able to do that in my own strength. Listen to what he says. Increase, increase my what? Increase my faith. Because it's going to take the faith of God to be able to release somebody who is just bent on hurting me. Bent on running me down seven times in a day and I'm supposed to release them every time that they ask for forgiveness and then they turn again and they do it again. He says, you must forgive them. And the apostle said to Jesus, then you're going to have to increase our faith. 
Okay, look at Matthew 18, verse 21 and verse 22. I want to show you something here. And Jesus was not contradicting himself here. I want to show you something that the Lord showed me. Uh, Matthew 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said to Jesus, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Seven times, okay? This is what Peter is asking Jesus. Uh, seven times, he must have got wind. That this is what Jesus told him, the apostles in, um, in Luke, okay? In verse 22, Jesus said to him, no. Well, didn't you just tell him in, in Luke that if a person wrongs you um, seven times in a day that they're supposed to, you know, you're supposed to forgive them? Okay, but we see here in Matthew 18, Peter says, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times. Jesus said, no, not seven times, but 77 times. So Jesus is not contradicting himself when he gave the disciples one number in Luke seven times. And then he gave Peter another number 77 times. Because you know what? The issue wasn't in how many times a day that they were to forgive. The issue is never the number. There, are, there is no limitation. There's no cap on it. Oh my God, there is no cap. So the number, so here it is why he could give one set of disciples one number, but then when he got with Peter, he gave him another number because the number was not the issue. The issue is however many times, however many times you need to release somebody in a day. I see one person over the congregation is shaking their head like I got it. <laughs> however many times during the day that you need to release somebody, that is the point is that regardless to how many times they come up against you and ask for forgiveness, that you are to release them, whether it's seven times in a day, whether it's 77 times in a day, whether it's 149 times in a day, whether it's 239 times in a day, the number is not the issue. The issue is whether you're going to walk in faith. Come on, just. The issue is whether you're going to walk in faith. The just shall walk by what I say, not by how you feel. And then when you walk by this, you're not going to walk from lip service because the Bible says he said that their heart, amen, glory to God, is far from him, but they honor him with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God says you're going to have to forgive in your heart. And how are you going to do that without the Holy Spirit? You can't do that without the Holy Spirit. This is, is everybody okay out there? So Jesus is not contradicting himself. He gave the disciples one number in Luke and 17 to seven times. And he gave Peter another number. God is expecting us to forgive regardless to the number of times. Listen again. It's our Christian duty. Somebody shout with me. The Lord increase our faith. Lord increase our faith. Increase our capacity to forgive. Increase our capacity to release and to pardon people, to overlook, to ignore, to see it and not see it. Listen to this, to hear it and not hear it. See, you got to, oh my God, the Bible says that they that walk after the flesh, listen to this, minds the things of the flesh. But that they that walk after the spirit minds the things of the spirit. And when you're walking after God's ways in the Holy Spirit, you don't even catch a whole lot of stuff that other people catch. You say, really? I thought that was a compliment. I didn't hear that. Because you're listening with the ears of God and you're not listening for offense. Why? Because you're walking in the spirit. And when you walk after the flesh, you mind the things of the flesh. Come on. When you're in the flesh, you notice every little thing. You notice everything. How, how they spoke. Amen. How they look. Glory to God. You notice every little thing when you're walking in, in the flesh. But when you're walking in the spirit, you just see the glory of God. You just see God, amen, handling things. You see God moving in your life. You see God making ways. So our capacity to forgive the same person seven times or 77 times every day is the key to our, listen at this, spiritual survival. Our capacity to forgive the same person or others, people, period, 
seven times a day or 77 times every day is the key to our spiritual survival. If we do not forgive, it's been scientifically proven that we suffer physically. Sickness, premature death, cancer, heart disease, oh Lord, arthritis, <laughs> migraine headaches. You suffer physically when you don't forgive, when you don't release because it's like poison. It's like toxins in our system that manifest. Come on, your issues will show up in your tissues. The issues of your heart will show up in your tissues, will show up in your body. Our health is directly related to our ability to forgive. And many times the hardest person to forgive is yourself. Point to yourself. That's the hardest person to forgive many times is yourself. It's the hardest person to release. It's the hardest person to ignore. It's the hardest person to overlook. It's yourself. I want to share this revelation with you in, in, in my closing. I want to share this revelation with you that God gave me on yesterday about holding on to grudges and resentment. I, I don't have my phone up here. Pastor, can you reach in my pocketbook? I think my phone should be in my pocketbook. If not, yes. Um, I, on my phone, my phone has been acting up really bad. It's been acting up really bad. It's been slow. Just really been doing some crazy stuff. Uh, just freezing, getting stuck. And the other day I was telling the apostle, we kept saying, you need a new phone. You might need a new phone. You might need a new phone. And the apostle said, let me hold your phone. Let me hold your phone. And he went to my pictures and he said, babe, you literally have almost 7,000 pictures on your phone. 7,000 pictures on your phone. And I don't know how many videos that I had, had erased that was hindering my phone from working properly. My phone was held seven, almost 7,000 pictures. And I went back and some of those pictures was, I had never deleted any pictures off of my phone. And it has started affecting, listen at this, there were some updates that came up that I needed so that my phone could function properly, that it kept telling me your capacity won't handle the download. Listen, won't handle the update. And I kept trying to figure why I couldn't update my phone because I knew that it was one, one particular update. It was saying for a certain security and it would fix something. And, and I knew that my phone was suffering. Listen at this, because I've, we've realized on yesterday, my phone had been hindered from even receiving downloads and updates because I refused to let go of pictures. I refused to let go of, of what I felt was sentimental. I was holding on to these pictures because I said, you know what? I got to keep these. Wasn't using them, but was holding on to them onto the hard drive. And it was beginning to crash because it did not have the capacity to even, even allow me to do updates. So what are you forfeiting because you are walking around because you won't unload, because you won't, amen, unpack a resentment and offense and, and unforgiveness? What are you holding back? What is hindering your life? What, what is hindering you because you're walking around with all of these things in your spirit that you refuse to delete, that you refuse to erase, that you refuse to unpack? That's slowing you down. And listen to this. I felt like I needed another phone. Well, I need another. Well, I might need another church. I just think I need to change churches. I just think I need to change cities. I just think I need to change wives. I, I need to change a wife. I need to change my husband. No, God says, no, 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 no. What you need to do is to create capacity. Oh, my God. You need to create capacity. And the only way you're going to create capacity is that you got to unload. You got to let me clear out the pigs in the parlor. You got to let me, amen, deal with your heart, the issues of your heart. Glory to God. You don't need to relocate. You don't need to relocate. You don't need to move. You need to deal with those 7,000 things that are on your phone, that's in your soul. Come on, the legions, the many. 
Woo! The many, the many, the many that you picked up over the years that you have held on to. That has now I've grown into bitterness and, and anger and resentment and, and, and offense. And it was hindering. It was, it was holding up. And when I began to delete, I, I think I got up to deleting 3,000. I thought I deleted 3,000 pictures on last night. And the moment that I deleted them, I went to the, um, the um, settings and I hit the upgrade or install and zoop, it went right through. Oh my, do you see the revelation? It went right through and it says your phone is now preparing for the install. And the moment that you release them, come on. Oh, the moment that you release them, the Holy Spirit will say, oh my God, your life is now preparing for the install. Your life is now preparing for the increase. Your life is now pre preparing for the multiplication. Why? Because you dealt with the issues that were in your soul. And my phone ever since I downloaded. So can you imagine when I go back and erase the other 3,000? How quick, how quick, how quick. Why? Because I am unloading and my phone now has the capacity to bring in two. My God. And this is how it is when, with unforgiveness and those things in your soul, resentment and anger. The moment you begin to unload, the moment you begin to delete, the moment you begin to cast out. Come on up in here. Cast out out those things that are in your soul is the moment you now have created capacity capacity for the relationships that God desires to bring into your life capacity for the blessings that God desires to bring into your life capacity for the financial breakthrough that God desires to bring into your life God says I can't bring it because you're not ready you don't have room you don't have space for them in your life you don't have space for that in your life. You don't have the capacity. So this faith series, in the middle of this faith series, God says, I want to minister to you about the faith to forgive, the faith to release, the faith to pardon. Because I'm getting ready to bring into your life, when you, when you create this space, you are responsible for the dealings of your soul. You are responsible. Yes, your pastors, your, your therapists, and, 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 and whoever else you have in your, on your team, they will assist you. But you are responsible for the dealings in your soul. Ah, glory. Standing to your feet all over this place. We're missing out on updates. We're missing out on divine downloads. Because God says there's no room you don't have the capacity you're full you're full of offense you're full of unforgiveness you're full of regret and resentment when God says I'm trying to bring you and usher you into the newness of life in this season but you have got to let go of your past you've got to release people you have to say to your past you owe me nothing this is what I said to my dad when he came into my life and he just, he found himself even recently. I, I was having a phone conversation with him about three weeks ago and he apologized again for not being in my life. I said, listen, you don't have to keep apologizing. I released you. We're good. So you got to be able to look at your life and say, my past owes me nothing. You don't owe me. I forgive you. I release you. But herein is, the, herein is the part, the challenging part, is to treat them as if they never done anything. It's to treat the offender, Prophet J, as if they are not guilty. God said there are some divine downloads some divine updates I want to bring into your life. And I'm ready for you. I am here today to strengthen you with the faith to release, the faith to forgive. Don't move by how you feel. Don't move by how you feel, but move by what I said. Faith is your life 
God's response to me and my word and my ways. Some divine downloads await your life. Mm. Await your relationships. Await your physical body. Divine downloads. Come on, begin to lift those hands all over this room. Just lift those hands and begin to worship God. Come on, begin to worship God. Begin to worship God. God says, I am going to sit with you. I'm going to sit with you as you sit with me. And God says, I am going to strengthen you. The Holy Spirit is going to sit with you as you sit with him in us. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring like a movie. I am going to play in your mind. I am going to go deep into the corridors of your soul and I'm going to put my finger on every individual that has ever hurt you that you are still holding yeah God says I need that space in your heart God says I need that room in your life mm. God says, with where I'm taking you and where you're going, there's no room in your heart, no room in your life for offense, for unforgiveness, for resentment, for bitterness. God says, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for those things. I'm going to put my finger on them through the Holy Spirit, and then I'm going to increase your faith. I'm going to strengthen your faith, and you're going to be have the ability to pardon them, to, to release them, to to let them go to ignore to overlook and then God says that I'm going to give you the love and the compassion to love them I'm not saying I'm not saying God is not saying that you have to allow these people back in your life I'm not saying that come on hear me in the Holy Ghost but God says they're still present in your life even now. Because they're tied to you everywhere you go. You take them with you everywhere you go. You despise them. You hate what they did. But yet you carry them around with you everywhere you go. God says my anointing is here to break you out. My anointing is here to strengthen you now. Come on lift those hands. David, I need something a little heavier. I need some, I need some chords. I need my, my prophetic chords. God says, I'm here to break you out. God says, I'm here to break you out. I'm here to give you some room, some space, some room, some space. I'm here to give you some grace. My divine enablement, my divine enablement. And I see many of you, many of you sitting in the presence of the Lord. And I see you with a journal. I see you with a, a God pad and a pen. And I, and I see you writing. And I see you writing. And I see you crying. I see you writing and crying. I, I see you balled up in the presence of the Lord because the hurt was deep. The hurt was deep. The hurt was deep. But I also see you, glory to God, in your time of healing. I see you in your time of deliverance. I see you in your time of victory. God says, I'm summonsing you. I'm calling you to a meeting. I'm summonsing you and I'm calling you to a meeting. I'm summonsing you and I'm calling you to a meeting. A meeting with me. A meeting with me. How can two walk together except they agree? How can two walk together except they agree? God says, I need you to agree with what I show you. I need for you to agree with what I show you because it's going to be in your honesty. It's going to be in your agreement that I am able to deal with the dealings of your soul. The dealings of your soul. Hallelujah. With what I show you, I'm going to need for you to agree with. I'm going to need for you to agree with. I'm going to need for you to be honest with yourself and embrace what I'm showing you. God says, I am walking you out of darkness and I'm walking you into the newness of life. Mm. 
I'm walking you into the newness of life. I'm walking you into the newness of life, saith the Lord. Come on, lift those hands real high. Come on, lift those hands real high. David, if you can't get on the drums for me, please, y'all work with me. Come on, hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands real high. God, we thank you. We bless your wonderful name, God. We love you in this place. Hey, God, we thank you. God, we you. God, we love you in this place. Hey, yeah, my God said, I'm coming for it. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for it. I want my children free. I want my people free. I want you free. I want you free. Come unto me, all of you who labor and are heavy laden. I, I hear the Lord say, I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. I, I hear the Lord say, a divine unloading, a divine unloading a divine unloading in the name of Jesus you're going to be in my presence and I am going to begin to allow you to unload allow you to unload God says I'm creating a safe place for you even now a safe place and and you're going to enter you're going to enter this place and God says I want you to give me all of your heart God says I can handle all of your heart I can handle all of your hurt God says I don't need for you to hold back I don't need for you to hold back release whatever you need to release in my presence I am creating a space for you and I'm giving you a time to unload and just get it out get it out get it out get it out you're gonna be able to get it out no judgment no judgment zone no no judgment zone I'm not going to judge you or charge you foolishly but you're going to be able to release I hear the Lord saying I'm getting ready to give you a divine release a divine release a divine release because I have a divine installment a divine upload that I need to give you but first is there has to be a divine release in your soul an, an unloading yeah, yeah, my soul. A purging, saith the Lord. A purging, saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Come on, lift those hands and tell the Lord, I receive. I receive, God. I, oh, come on, we're receiving early. We're receiving early. But the directions of the Lord is to get in some quiet time with Him. With your journals and your pens. There are some of you that don't care how you try to get away from it. Your past always shows up in your presence. Your present. Your past is always showing up in your present. And if that is you, I need you to hit this altar right now. I need you to hit this altar right now. If that is you, you are you you are tired. You are tired of your past showing up in your present. In your present, your, your, your past is stalking you. Your past, your past. Father, we thank you. Come on, just pray with me, those of you who are at your seats. Just pray with me. Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. We glorify your name. Come on, lift those hands high. In the name of Jesus. The capacity, the capacity. The capacity, come in free to let me lay my hands on you. The capacity, you mandate a bekoshe. Hey, you mandate a bekoshe. In the name of Jesus, a divine release, a divine unloading. In she, you mandate a bekoshe. Hey, you mandate a That is a weight that you are carrying. You were never designed to carry this weight. And I hear the Lord, Mbaba Shoko saying, I'm my shade. There's several downloads, there's several installations, there's several things that the Lord has been trying to get to you and do in and through you. But there's always been a smothering, there's always been, Mbaba mm, Shoko, the cares of this world is choking the word, it's choking the things that God wants to do in your life, it's choking, it's choking, it's literally strangling. It's a demonic strangulation because of the cares and the weights and 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 there's some people, there's some people, several people, several people, several people. The Lord said, I'm going way, 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 way back in your past, daughter. I'm going back in your past. And we it's time for us to deal with this. I hear the Lord saying it's time for us to deal with this. It's not going away. It's not going away. It is time. Now is the time. 
for us to deal with this. And I strengthen you now in the name of Jesus. I strengthen you now in the name of Jesus for your next, for your next, for your next place of freedom, for your next place of liberty in Christ. In Jesus' name, receive, woman of God. Receive. I'm just going to lay my hands on you all. Just for strength. Strength now in the name of Jesus. Strength. 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 We thank you now, Father. We thank you now for strong faith. Woo, my shit. Woo, my bandi de bekosha. You getting ready to overthrow some giants and cut their heads off. You're getting ready to overthrow some giants, but not just overthrow them, but I see a divine beheading in the name of Jesus. And this is what the Lord is doing for you in your faith. Your faith is being strengthened to behead those giants that keep showing up in your present from the past in the name of Jesus God we thank you God we thank you now and lay hands on this your daughter in Jesus name I thank you for the newness of life I thank you for deliverance and victory oh my shake in Jesus name oh God in the city of her soul oh my take deliverance God deliverance hey I serve notice on every demonic force that's fighting her destiny now I serve notice on you now and I command you to loose her and let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her walk into her destiny in Jesus. Let her walk in the newness of life in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We thank you, Father. Come here, daughter. Let me lay my hands on you. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name for strength. For strength, God. Strength to deal with past issues. People from the past. In the name of Jesus. Who bande de bekosha? In the name of Jesus. Hey, Yaman Shoko. I see you telling some people no, Isha. I see you telling some people no. I see you telling some people no and meaning it this time. I see you telling some people no, 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 we, we no, no, no. I'm not going back down that road and mean it this time. And mean it this time in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for strong strength and faith in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I decree and declare, Father, that she strengthened with might in the inner man. Oh, by who Jesus strengthened with might in the inner man. Come on, y'all praying, y'all praying. Yeah, y'all my shook in the name of Woo my shake. God, I thank you for this, your daughter. Woo, my God. Oh my dedebeshe. Oh my man did a bit koshe ya man da da basho. You are you are pregnant with so many spiritual things and I'm going to lay my hands on you. Mm -hmm. There's so many things that that God wants to bring forth in your life. Spiritual things. Spiritual things. Spiritual things. I awaken. I awaken. I call forth. I stir up every gift in you woman of God in the name of Jesus and I, and I speak might and strength to you now in the name of Jesus I hear the Lord saying put your past in its place put your foot down use your authority and put your past in its place in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hey yaman show man of God who man did they be koshe yaman who by shaking who man did they be koshe God, I hear the Lord saying you need to forgive yourself man of God you need to forgive yourself there's some things that you need to release yourself from the Lord said the past is the past is the past is the past and God says behold I'm doing a new thing in your life I'm doing a new thing I'm doing a new thing. Yeah, yeah, Macho. I'm rewriting the narrative because there's some people who have written you off. There's some people who have written you off, but the Lord says, I am rewriting the narrative. I am rewriting the narrative of your life. And God says, in our time together, God says, I am going to speak to you to some, into some deep 
places of your soul some deep places in your soul that 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 wants to show up at particular seasons and trip you up but ooh, but i hear the lord saying that I, we are coming for that we we are coming for that we, we are coming for that he and the holy ghost you all are ooh, bah, shake it. the lord the word the holy ghost and you y'all are coming for that and you ooh, bah, sh- i hear you i hear i hear i hear for you man of god that your tongue shall be the pen of a ready writer and what God shows you you're going to begin to decree and speak Mm. you're going to begin to speak over your life because there's some word curses that I tear down now in the name of Jesus I tear them down now in the name of Jesus I set fire to them come on y'all praying I set fire to them now it that have been released against you man of God I decree and declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper and every mouth that has risen up against you and condemnate we condemn now in the name of Jesus every tongue we condemn now in Jesus name that is speaking contrary to the will of God for your life Mm. I hear the Lord saying for you son that we're getting ready to rewrite your story Mm. we're getting ready to rewrite your story we're getting ready to rewrite your story thank you father come on and give God praise come on and give God praise Come on and give God praise. Come on and give God praise. Hey, Yaman Shoko. Hey, God is getting ready to shut the mouths of the naysayers. He's going to shut the mouth of those who were back there in your past with you and who feel like you don't deserve to be blessed. Who feel like you don't deserve to be blessed. Who feel like, oh my God, who, who have malice, who have malice in their hearts who have malice in their hearts against you and they feel like you should not be blessed. But I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to walk you into these blessings. I'm going to walk you into these blessings. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. God, we thank you. We receive it. Faith to forgive. Faith to forgive. Faith to not look back. Keep looking. Faith to close the doors. Faith to close the doors. And to walk into the newness of life where which Christ has made us free. Come on and give God praise. I'm finished. Come on and give God praise. I'm finished. Hallelujah. Come on, that's it. Bless God. Bless God. Come on, bless God real good. God, we thank you in this place. God, we bless your name. Yeah, God, we thank you for deliverance. We thank you for deliverance. Can we thank the Lord for deliverance? Can we thank him for deliverance? Hey, yaman shoko mandala ba. Yeah, yeah, my show. Deliverance. That's it. That's it, sister. That's it. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey, yaman shoko. Deliverance. Hey, yaman shoko. Hey, yaman shake. I speak to her destiny in God. I speak to her destiny in God. I speak to her purpose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. We thank you. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Come on and receive apostle at this time. That's it. Just clap your hands and bless him. Come on, bless him some more. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for the woman of God. Oh, bless you, woman of God. Bless you. Strength. 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 We pray that God will reciprocate. Come on, if you receive today, if you receive, come on, if your faith has been ministered to, that's the whole purpose of, I believe our worship is to bless God and to fellowship with the brethren. 
but I believe God also cultivates and develops in us a greater capacity to walk in obedience. You know, one of the most important things that you can ever do, the Bible says that Jesus said, when I come and when I come into the earth, will I find faith? And what he's saying is that when he basically begins to visit his people, when he visits you, will he find faith, the ability to respond to him, trust him, believe God through the word of God in his way. And so give God praise as we have received a faith booster. Come on, this baby's still getting her deliverance. You know, we don't know what people have gone through. We don't know what people are dealing with. And sometimes you just have to be patient. You have to be patient. You know, I've gone through, unfortunately, uh, injuries in my uh, lifetime athletically, and I've had surgeries, and, you know, some surgeries are an hour, and then there was one surgery I did, it was like four hours. I'm like, whoo, and sometimes it takes a little longer, and sometimes you just have to give people a little time to get theirs. You can have your seats in the presence of our God. That's it. Let the Lord have his way. I believe that God is a healer. God is a deliverer, and I believe that he's taken us deeper. He's taken us deeper. Somebody lift your hands and just lift your heart even and say, Father, take me deeper. 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 I want to go deeper in God. I want to basically be able to. There's a song that I think it's Oceans. It talks about, you know, take me where my faith is without or my trust is without borders. And I can walk upon the waters wherever you call me. And so we praise God for Apostle Catherine and her obedience to God and his word. Thank God for the ministry. The woman of God is truly blessing us with the teaching of faith. And I promise you, you cannot get a more important. Again, there are a lot of subjects that we love, a lot of subjects that we desire and we want to hear God uh, teach and talk about this. But faith is the single most important subject of the Bible because they that come to God must first believe and believe that he is a rewarder. So we're honored today to receive that word. And how many of you got shook today? I got shook. Glory to God. God, I'm telling you, right now in my spirit, there are things that I'm like, okay, God. Uh, uh, and my wife has this saying. She says whatever he puts his finger on, she, she begins to deal with. And, you know, I think sometimes we all try to avoid the finger of God. Like, get your finger out of my business, God. I don't know, baby, y'all are not like me. Sometimes I be like, God, I'll take care of this myself. I don't even want you in this because you're going to turn this uh, and make this about me. But how many of you know forgiveness is a work that, I mean, it demands we, we get help from the Holy Ghost. Oh, I know I'm not the only one. It is not easy forgiving. I know your neighbor make it look like it is just so easy because they are very spiritual. But I sometimes I have to go on fast to ask the Lord to help me forgive. God, help me crucify parts of my flesh, parts of my carnal nature. Because let's be honest, there's a part of us that don't want to forgive. And that was the part of the Bible that I struggled with when I got saved. And I'm like, you're talking about love your enemies. I don't know if I like this guy. Because I got some ideas for my enemies, but it ain't loving them. Glory to God, I am the only one still getting saved. But really, I, I did. I struggled with that part. I was like, God, you got to help me with this. Talking about loving people that I don't like and people who despitefully use me and be kind to them. That ain't how I grew up. Glory to God. And so I had to learn the ways of God. And I learned that that's a spiritual act. It takes the Holy Ghost. You got to be good and saved. And this is why you got to have the love of God. The love of God, when she was teaching about how 70 times 7, who, who can even imagine dealing with somebody, you know, that repetitive when it comes to issues? It's like, man, you know how it is. We came up the lost me, uh, cross me, lost me uh, generation. You cross me, you lost me. Yeah, hello? You one cross? Uh, we ain't playing baseball. We playing me ball. And me ball is you cross me once, you won't cross me again. But 70 times 70 in a day? Whoo, Jesus. That sounds like uh, somebody who you live with. You can't get rid of them. Hello? Got to keep seeing them, right? But that's the love of God. The love of God never runs out. It never runs out. God's love, the Bible said, does not fail. And there are three things that I believe are the key to all of our relationships that we own and possess. Whatever relationship you're in, if you want a healthy relationship, it is imperative that you ask God to give you the love of God, teach you how to forgive, and then enable you to trust. Those three keys, if you have love, trust, and forgiveness, 
you can manage and you can you can really make it and and build any healthy relationship because any and all relationships will require love and forgiveness because that's just the nature of relationships. I've been with my wife for 32 years, married, 42 years we've been together. So literally just about all of our lives since we were 12 years old, we've been together. And I promise you, she's had to forgive me more than I probably have had to forgive her. Get me some brownie points right now. Glory to God. She's probably had to have more mercy on me than I probably had to have mercy on her. That being said, it literally, no matter what relationship, we're going to offend one another. We're going to offend each other. And I know that sometimes it's hard uh, to deal with certain things, but I love that teaching on forgiveness. And I thank God for the woman of God. Thank God for the word. Well, it's time to give. We're going to expeditiously move into our time of worship in giving. Love the word of God today because it challenged me. It challenged me. And I am already seeing and hearing. And I'm telling you, people think because you're a preacher, pastor, and you, you don't struggle with these things. And right now... I mean, any and all offenses, you have to address them properly because when you do not address offenses properly, you end up basically holding on to stuff. And next thing you know, you have things that's hindering you from reaching into your destiny. How many of you know that your destiny, your purpose, your place that God has called you to, even your success demands your deliverance? There's a version of you that needs to improve to get to your highest self. One of the things that I often say, and Catherine can, can relate to this, I often say this, is the best thing you can bring to any relationship, and when I'm talking relationships, I'm not just talking about husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, I'm talking about work relationships. Wherever you go, whatever you basically uh, join yourself to or bring yourself into a place where you're a part of, the best thing you can do is bring a delivered you to that relationship. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm a realtor and I have clients. And sometimes they'll be like, Lord, I pray you deliver my clients. One of the things I always ask my clients to get delivered from is a late spirit. Y'all can't relate to that, but, you know, if you show a house at three, please come before three. And so I say that because in all of our relationships, deliverance, and there's a version of you that is demanding that you get your deliverance, your healing, that you get over issues. Your next relationship is it is demanding or it is crucial that you get over past relationships so you can enjoy current relationships. Isn't it challenging to have to pay for other people's discretions that they've caused in people's lives? You ever had to, you know, go into a relationship and you're paying for what somebody else did to them? I mean, yeah, we got to be patient with one another, but it's like, don't make me have to pay for what they did to you. I, I, didn't, I didn't do that to you. Don't make me have to pay for it. So that's why it's important that we get delivered. Are y'all ready to give? Can I get my phone? I want to read a scripture to you. I'm telling you, I'm excited about uh, what God is saying and doing. It is time to give. And the Bible says that, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. So if you would turn with me very quickly in your Bibles, I know Pastor Robert is the one that you normally see and receive uh, during the offertorial period, but indulge me today because I look just a little bit better than him anyway. So he don't look quite as good as I do. He's a handsome man, but I'm telling you, I'm a good looking man and I'm going only off of what my wife told me years ago. <laughs> and she see it now too. Praise God. Look in your Bibles if you would. I want to read a couple of versions of scripture uh, to really encourage you and to boost your faith. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 17, every man shall give as he is able. Somebody said as he is able. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he have given unto thee. Every time that we give, every time that we sow, every time that we seed, remember it is according to to and how God has blessed you. It is according to how the Lord has blessed you. And I know the Lord has blessed you and I know that he's blessed all of us in some capacity. You've been blessed. And so I want you to prepare your hearts and mind. Look at Luke 6 and verse 38. Luke 6 and 38 also says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto or into your bosom. 
For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And so as the Lord has blessed you, you give, but you also give in a measure. In other words, in a measure of your faith. And give and it shall be given unto you. I believe that the Lord will give unto you as you give. The scripture says in Corinthians, if you give sparingly, he will also give back to you sparingly. If you give bountifully, he will give back to you bountifully. And so we thank God. One last verse of scripture, and then we're going to encourage you uh, to give. Uh, 2 Corinthians verse or chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity, for God God loves a cheerful giver. So we give according to our ability. We give in the measure in which we want to be blessed. So if we want God to bless us abundantly, we give bountifully. But we also give cheerfully. That's the last part that I want to just encourage you to bring your tithe and your offering today cheerfully. And that is something that I believe always is to be understood because God loves a cheerful giver. I believe God enjoy seeing you give in the right spirit more so than he's measuring how much you give. I believe that if you give in the right spirit without regard to the amount, the right spirit is more of a blessing to God and to you as well as literally God will honor that as you give cheerfully unto the Lord. So stand to your feet as Pastor Robert will say. There are several things that we want to do today. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering and then we want to activate our faith today. I want to encourage you because I want you to also... Uh, activate your faith. We're going to receive our tithe and our offering, but we're also going to ask those of you who would. Uh, we are basically believing God, and we uh, sometimes find ourselves in situations where we want to help and be a blessing to others, and today there is a, a family that we want to be a blessing to, and I want you outside and above your tithe and offering, if you are able to give a seed to sow into someone's life. Listen, sometimes you don't need to know everything, because everything is not for us to know everything, but to know and trust that as we give and as we sow, we're being a blessing to someone else, right? And I'm telling you, if you are uh, able, I want you to prepare your hearts and minds. We have a special envelope for that offering. And so I'm going to ask, even as you bring your gifts, if you have a seed of any amount, uh, I would encourage you, if those of you have faith and believe God, you know, and trust God, I want you to just sow as, as bountifully as you can. My wife is sowing for us, and she's sowing a seed, and she's being a blessing for me. Uh, she stepped out, but you know how it is, uh, bro Brother Core. Our wives hold our money, you know. You know, brothers today, look, uh, listen, a good woman got it where a man can't do a whole lot of cheating because he ain't walking around no more than about $20. <laughs> because old girl can't get too much because, <laughs> like, I got to ask my wife if I can. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a good woman. No, you, she, she's got it. She's good. That's a good woman right there. A good woman. And a good man don't mind his woman holding his purse, right? Uh, but I say that to say this. I say that to say this. I'm going to also participate and give. You may not see me physically doing it. But if you desire to give, I want to basically place these special envelopes. I want you to give. Listen, I encourage you. Activate your faith. I would love if every single one of you who can sow a $100 seed into this particular uh, situation where we want to be a blessing. The Bible says that when one is up, all of us is up. When one is down, all of us are down. And again, sometimes we don't have the liberty of basically disclosing everything. But it's just know it's a blessing to be be a blessing and 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 we just simply want to be a blessing and we want to basically uh, watch God also be a blessing to those who give so I'm going to sit these on the altar here father we thank you for the offering today the tithe and the offering we thank you for your people they are faithful in their giving they're faithful in their seed sowing and I pray today that as we sow and as we see as we give today our tithe and our offering I decree and declare that that window that the scripture just talk about. It is now open the, over the people of God. It is open and you're pouring out blessings that they do not have room enough to receive. I thank you that those who are giving, they're giving and God it shall come back unto them 
good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto their bosom in Jesus' name. All right. Listen, we're going to ask that if you will come out from wherever you are expeditiously, you can run over the uh, floor attendant. Run over her if you want to. That's okay. Sister Melanie is on the floor. But wherever you are, come out in an orderly fashion. Do like they do uh, in Cameroon. They told me the only laws they have with driving and moving is don't hit nobody and don't get hit. So come out from wherever you are. Bring your gift. Bring your seed. And we ask that you would give uh, and be a blessing to uh, the need that we have, even with the family. Be a blessing if you could sow $100, $50, $20, whatever you can sow. Let's be a blessing one to another. The Bible says that we bless and encourage one another. So if you would get that seed, I believe my wife is sowing and she's sowing $500 today for us on behalf of this family. And we want to be a blessing today. Hallelujah. We want to be a blessing today. We want to be a blessing today. Also, we have some amazing opportunities to be blessed. How many of you work the stock market? How many of you get up in the morning and at 8 o'clock you get up when the stock market opens and you begin to see what's moving and what's going and you begin to see how the market is doing. You begin to read and study and look at all of the different companies and what's being sold and who's trading what. And sometimes if you look at CEOs, if you, if you work the stock market, you can look at uh, CEOs and see what CEOs are doing. Sometimes they will tell you that the CEO of this company has just put this much money in that company and you know... They can't really give inside tips because you go to jail for that, right? But uh, as Martha Stewart and them, you go to jail for that. But my point in that is, is that they are looking for opportunities to sow. The Bible says that we are to be lenders and not borrowers. One of the most important things for us to understand building wealth, you do not build wealth through your income. Wealth is not built, nor is it generated from how much money you make is how much money you're able to invest, save, and how you can keep, if you will, your overhead. You run your house like you do your business. Keep your overhead low, meaning let it be as little as possible that it costs for you to live, and then look for opportunities to invest. When you invest, you take your money and you lend it to companies and you allow that company to take your money, make money and tell you at the rate of this percent, I'm going to give you back your money so you can make money. That's how your money becomes your employees. You become a boss. And so my point is, is that even in the ministry, we have opportunities just like they do in the stock market. Uh, the stock market is an opportunity for people to come uh, to the market and basically invest in the market so that you can build wealth. Well, we have some amazing things that's coming uh, and that is going on here at Impact. And we want to invite you to take advantage of the opportunity to be blessed. Somebody say 1K Sunday. Oh, somebody say they balling big over here. 1K Sunday. We have 1K Sunday coming up and we want to encourage you. Listen, don't listen. Tell your neighbor, don't don't shrink. I'm telling you, for people who believe in God for big stuff, we got to learn how to have enough faith to be able to say, God, I can, I can live there. I can grow there. I can, listen, I can exist there. I, that's me. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you, 1K Sunday is where we are committing to bring a $1,000 seed offering to sow into the vision of our downtown project where we are basically already prepared to put the roof on the building. We need your support. We need your help. And some of you are saying, where in the world am I going to get $1,000? I'm telling you, if you ask God to, to give you seed to sow, he will give you seed to sow. Oh, hello, somebody. Uh, how many of you ever bought a pair of uh, uh, $900 shoes? You never bought a pair of $900 shoes? Okay, I'll leave that alone then. There are places that you can go I went into this one particular place in Chapel Hill, and it's an authentic skin shop. Hey, I was like y'all when I went in. I went in. I went in with some big ballers, too, you know. And when I went in, and you know how it is. You're in the store, Brother Joseph, and you just look at a price, and you slam it back down real quick. You're like, I know. Wait a minute. And I went to a few other racks, picked it up, like, oh, my. We finna ball for real. And so the, the, the gentleman looked at me and said, Newsom, you're going to get you some. Here's some nice ostrich skins. 
I said, ostrich? I ain't never worn no ostrich. I said, how much are they? He said, well, this one here is about 1700 I said, okay. I said, no, nah, I ain't got no taste for ostrich. In my mind, I'm thinking, $1,700, the bills that I got? <laughs> I cannot walk out of here with a pair of $1,700 shoes with the bills that I have and go home and tell my wife? And so what I did was I was real clever. I said, listen, let me get some of, y'all got any nice classic leather? He said, well, yeah, well, the only thing we got, we got some leather. He said, but this leather here, uh, you know, it got a little ostrich on the toe. He said, it's about the most affordable shoe we have in the place, and it's around 350 I said, you know, those look pretty good. Do you have them in nine and a half? I didn't need to try them on. Just give me the nine and a half. Let's get out of here. And I was in there with, with, some, with, some, with some gentlemen, and they, they came out with bags of shoes. I'm like, we balling today. How many of you know you better know your, your, you better know your numbers? I say that to say this. Well, what I learned was don't be afraid to hang and to be around and to also uh, uh, hear big things because God can grow you to big things. One of the things that I believe that you can desire something that you fear and you'll never experience it. You can have a desire but be afraid of it. And a lot of people are afraid of giving to a certain, if you will, extent, but they have a desire to be blessed. And so one case Sunday, we're trusting that you will open your heart up and that you will trust God to give you the ability, the ability. One thing I believe is that we should not, we should not. God, you, you listen, you don't have to give God your light bill money. We don't want you to give to the church and then turn around and you just in dire straight. But what I do believe is that he gives seed to sow. Somebody say he gives seed to sow. And he gives bread to eat. And I believe if you are a sower, God will give you seed. So I prophesy that the Lord is going to fill this place in one case Sunday service. And we're going to have seed to sow. And I'm telling you, some of you, I feel it in the spirit. This, you're going to break through. This is going to be your first time ever giving a $1,000 seed. And you're going to feel good about it. Ah, glory to God. Never forget our first time when we gave big money like that. And I'll never forget when we received. Men were given to your bosom. We received. Remember when somebody came and gave us, uh, and said, I want to be a blessing to you, you know. And they say, here's $40,000. Talk about one time, you know. Somebody said, here's $40,000. And they just sold $40,000 into our lives. Come on, you say, what? And some people don't even make that in a year's time. And people will uh, literally give it unto your bosom. So I believe that God is going to do that. And I want you to believe with me. I was studying with Apostle C on faith. And I encourage you to continue to study faith as we prepare to let you go. Come on, stand to your feet. We're getting ready to leave this place of worship. But as I was studying it, one of the things that it said about uh, when you're dealing with faith. And in my study, I read something. And it was also from the late Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth said, the best thing you can do if you ever believe in God for something is to put everybody out. Out of that particular group that cannot believe with you. Ooh, now I'm not putting nobody out, but what I'm saying is when we together can believe, see, believing doesn't mean you will always have the ability to do what the next person can do, but I do believe with you. But if you believe, God will give you the miracle. Now let me give you scriptural context. The Bible said that Jesus was in a particular house and they invited him in, a woman uh, uh, and a husband, their, their daughter was, was literally dead. She was dead. And Jesus, Jesus basically was in there and said, the damsel is not dead. She's just asleep. The mama and the daddy laughed in a sarcastic way. It's like, our daughter's dead. What is he talking about? Jesus said, they got to go. Put them out. He put them out. Because what he needed to do, he didn't need doubt in the room. Ooh, I felt that in the spirit. Sometimes you got to look around and see who's smirking and see who's, uh, mm, yeah, right. See who, oh, Lord, here they go. No, sometimes you got to say to them, listen, that Sunday we want you to uh, basically find something to do. Because we need believers. Now, remember, that is not based on the size of your offering. 
that's based on your faith. I believe with you. And so today I'm believing God that as we leave this mountain of a worship experience that God has increased our faith even today and that literally, thank you, I just remember that. Uh, thank you. I, I thank you for that. I just remember that. But as we prepare to go, I almost forgot the agenda. I want to very quickly, as you all stand, if you are in school, uh, they ask me to pray for the children and I do want to do that. Thank you for that. They looking like, Apostle, you forgot. And we get ready to go into school. Look at these babies. They coming up like they ready too. They walked up like A students. That's it. Y'all can turn and face me. That's it. Just face me. I'm going to pray for you and we're going to believe God with you. Amen. If you're in school in any capacity, high school, college, and even those of you who are taking courses, even some of you who may be back in school, online, whatever, we want to believe God with you. We want to pray for you. Thank you for reminding me because I did forget, completely forgot that. Y'all ready for this year? Awesome, awesome. I'm going to give y'all one of the secrets. When I used to work in the school and I used to uh, be in the classroom and I used to uh, work with students in the classroom, I'm going to give you a tip. This will, this will give you an advantage in every class, I promise you. And the teachers will love you. And this is no joke. This is a very powerful principle. Cooperate and do what your teachers ask you to do. Follow their instructions. And I promise you, you'll have favor in that class like you could not imagine. Just follow the instructions. Whatever the instructions are in the classroom, whatever the rules are, follow it. Cooperate with the teacher. And I promise you, whatever you need, if you need favor, even if you're struggling in an area, I promise you that teacher will go the extra mile if you are that child. And if you do that, I believe that God will favor you and that God will bless you. I even now lift your hands at this altar, babies and adults. Father, I pray for these, your children, as well as these individuals who have even come upon another school year. I decree and declare prophetically that, Father, even now you're going to open their hearts, their minds, but you're also going to touch the sinew of their brain, God, the ability and the capacity to learn and to comprehend. Today, I supernaturally pray for them that father you will open up their learning ability that you would give them open minds that they will be able to hear knowledge and information they will be able to process and even their critical thinking skills uh, activate now in the name of Jesus I pray over them father that you would give them the grace and the ability to learn and to receive knowledge and to comprehend I thank you that you will give them the grace to be able to even approach test and to be able to approach assignments in faith and they will be able to do even excellent work in the name of Jesus. God, I pray over them now for success. I pray that you keep them safe. I decree and declare that every single student at this altar, whatever school that they will attend, that you will allow angels to watch over that school and that you would watch over them, Father, that they will be safe and they will be sound, God, that you would call even now the blessing of safety for the scripture says safety is of the Lord and we pray today that you would bless them I pray for their teachers and I pray for their administrators that God you will favor them that God every single person who will be responsible for teaching and working with these students that father God you will favor them and that you would cause them to even be blessed and to be at peace so that as they impart unto these your sons and daughters that father God your children and these adults who are back in school will be favored with every single thing that they need in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for them I bless them I decree and declare that they will not only succeed but they will go up abundantly above expectations even within themselves we thank you that there will be no learning disabilities there will be nothing to hinder them and I decree and declare father God that they will have successful years successful if you will study in the name of Jesus we pray and let everyone say amen
Amen. I bless you today. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. I bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Remember the secret now. Do what those teachers say. And I promise you, those teachers will favor you. They will cause you to not need anything and just cooperate and do everything that they ask you to do. And watch God give you favor even in your class. Go bless in the name of the Lord. Thank you guys for just receiving also. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. And even the absent portion of our young people who are not here, we send that blessing to all of our students and all of our children who are back in school. Father, we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, they are safe, and we thank you that they are blessed. I'm telling you, I believe that God wants us also to understand. I was telling Apostle C that one thing that we have to teach our young people is to take school serious and maximize these opportunities because we, as we get older, you know, working with young adults in their 20s and 30s, and you're asking them, how do you plan on making a living? I mean, people have these lifestyles, but I'm like, but you don't have, I mean, how are you going to work? I mean, and you got to be able to compete in this competitive, if you will, generation and society that we're in. And so the sooner you can take serious your schoolwork and your schooling and maximize every opportunity from middle school, high school, college, and beyond so that you can prepare yourself to have the ability to go through doors. I believe education is like a key that can get you through doors, get you through doors. And I'm not one who's saying that that's the only way you can succeed in life because there are a lot of successful people who may not be academically, if you will, degreed and don't have degrees and et cetera. But I believe that whatever uh, we do, we must teach our children and we must understand the importance of education so we can have a key to get in, a key to get in. Because I'm telling you, it's real out here in these streets, ain't it? Woo, clap your hands and give God praise. So we love you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you, Charm, and thank you, Marcus, the Lewises who are working with our teens. And again, uh, we appreciate them as the youth and teen pastors and working with our young people. Father, we again thank you for everything. Bless this your people as we leave this worship experience. We thank you for the word that we received today. We thank you for the woman of God. We do not take lightly what we receive, but we ask that even now, Father, you would cause that word to germinate, go deep into our spirit, deep into our heart. Show us areas, Father, where our faith is being challenged and where our faith is being even compromised because of unforgiveness. And then give us grace to forgive. Give us grace to forgive. And I decree and declare blessing blessings over this people as we apostolically release you to go out and make a difference everywhere you go. Be blessed, be blessed, and know that the Lord is with you wherever you go is our prayer. You are dismissed. God bless you. Hug somebody, love somebody. If you're not hugging, give somebody the fifth floor, the, the bruh man, fifth floor, what's up? Tell them I ain't hugging. Don't get too close. I'm still trying to distance, whatever that may be, but at least greet someone, love someone. Thank you to our visitors. We appreciate you being with us. We do not take lightly and we thank you and ask that you would come back again and worship with us the next time.